Hey guys, Jay here. I'm going to show you how to run the character setup process in Faceware Live for Motion Builder. So the objective here is that we have some data coming from Faceware Live server and it's coming into Motion Builder in real time, but we need to know what to do with that data. How do we map that onto your character? So I'm going to show you an example here with the Victor character. You can actually download this rig on our website on uh, the training assets page, which is available right here. So go ahead and pause the video, download this character, and once you have it unzipped and ready to go, Let's resume so that you can follow along with the same assets I'm using. Okay, so you got the character downloaded. Go ahead and open victor underscore live underscore mobu.fbx. So this is just a blank rig, so let's take a quick look at what this character actually is. Before we can map the controls, we want to take a look at what the controls actually are and what they're doing. Um, in this case, this is a really simple example of a blend shape rig, and we've set up a blend shape for each expression. Now you don't have to do this but it makes it a lot easier when you're creating your setup so that you can just go down the list and actually you know, use these controls, you know, one per each expression. It's also uh, a lot easier when you're actually seeing the data. You can tell exactly what's being turned on and, and kind of understand how the data is working. Now in your character, you might, uh, for example, have multiple controllers or blend shapes driving a sing being, sorry, being driven by a single expression. For example, for the blink here, you know, to make my character blink, I have one slider. It's nice and simple. But in your rig, you might have an upper eyelid joint, you might have a lower eyelid joint, and they're both rotating. You might have joints or blend shapes in the eyebrows to get a little uh, skin sliding, you know, above the eye, maybe even some upper cheek. So it is possible to add all of those things into a single expression. But for this video, this example, we've created a very simple uh, demo character for you to use so you can kind of get the process down. All right, so first thing we want to do is actually load in the character setup device. So in your asset browser in Mobu, go to the Devices tab. If you've installed Faceware Live Client for Motion Builder, you should see two devices here. You're going to have Faceware Live. This is what we will use later to actually stream in the data. You also have Faceware Character Setup. I have a third because I've also got Retargeter installed, but the two live devices are right here. So for Character Setup, drag this right into your scene. Okay, now the device interface, if I just bring this out here, it's very, very simple. Um, there's just a single button to connect the character setup interface with Motion Builder. You can load it right here, uh, but real quick, we can take a look at the installation folder. This is where the executable lives, so you can also launch it from this window here. All right, so if you're familiar with Faceware tools, you will uh, recognize this window. Now, technically, you can use this same tool to create a setup file for use with Retargeter. Uh, but for live, it's actually a little bit simpler than we would do with Retargeter. We don't need as much information to drive the character in real time. So I'll show you what I mean. Now, first thing you can do, uh, if you go to File, New, it's going to create several groups for you here. Now in Retargeter, we would use all of these groups. But for live, we actually don't need uh, four different groups. So I'm just going to delete them. Uh, we only need one single group for live, which kind of simplifies things, makes it a bit easier. So by deleting all your groups here, go ahead and hit New. Uh, you also, if you just skip doing File New, you can just go right over here and give it a name here. We'll just call it Full Face. The analysis data you don't need to worry about. That's retargeter specific. Okay, so with one group selected, we want to add all of our rig controls here from our character. So bring up the rig controls window select your character. Now, there's one thing that we should mention. I recommend that you keyframe all of the attributes that you are actually going to want to use, uh, including any rotational or translation values on your joints, uh, and especially the control you're going to use to drive the head motion. If they're not keyframed, uh, they won't be active, and retargeter won't, or excuse me, character setup uh, won't see the attributes when you go to add them to the list. So make sure they're keyframed. Come in here, click the Update button, and that's going to populate this list with all of the currently selected attributes. Okay, uh, Because I'm not worrying about face groups, I'm just adding everything to the, this one group here. Um, I'm not going to use these. I'm going to use a different joint for the head rotation. But I got all my blend shapes, so I just want to click Add Selected. And now they're all on my list. Okay, The minimum and maximum values are retargeter specific. You don't have to worry about that for live. But the default value is very important. Make sure that the default value here for all of these attributes is correct. For blend shapes, it's easy because it is zero. Uh, but for joints, 
it's not going to be zero if these are translations. Um, and depending on where the rig was created, uh, Max or Maya or, or in Mobu, the rotations also might not be zero. So uh, you can select all the attributes here and click set as default value. We'll grab the current position of the joints and set them all for you. Uh, but anyway, the important thing there is make sure this value is zero. If you're ever using Face for Live in Mobu and you turn it on and your face explodes and things are going all over the place, the most likely reason is that you forgot to set the default value. So you can remember this moment if that ever happens. Okay, so the next step, small thing, but make sure to give your character a name here. Uh, when you're loading multiple devices to run uh, many characters at once in the same motion builder scene, uh, this is the way you'll distinguish which device is driving which character. It makes it a bit easier for you. Okay, so at this point, go ahead and save, um, just so you have you know your halfway point saved, ready to go and then come on over to expression set. So the expression set is where we actually do the mapping. So what we've done so far is we've told the software which controllers to use and now we're going to teach them how to use those controllers. Uh, so we have an example image here uh, which happens to be the same character that we're using for the demonstration so it should be pretty easy for you to make the same pose. Um, in the list of expressions you'll go down this list starting from the top going all the way to the bottom and you'll actually pose out on the character in Motion Builder what you see uh, in this list. And that basically forms our range of motion for, these, uh, for this mapping here. Now, the way we'll do that is, let's just get a good view of our character here. Okay. Now I'm gonna select the first expression and in Motion Builder, it's gonna jump to that frame. All you need to do is select the character slide on that pose. Make sure it's the right one. Yep, that's correct. Uh, and then go ahead and keyframe that. I've got to select it. And then when you're done, here's the magic button here, finish selected expression. And that's going to actually tell the tool that you're done with that particular expression. Uh, if you don't hit that button, your motion builder scene will have all the information, but this tool will not know that you're basically ready to save out that pose. Okay, so you'll repeat the process for all of these expressions. As I explained earlier, for this example, each one of these expressions actually has its own blend shape. So it's pretty easy, you just go down the list and turn on each one. Um, with the exception of, at the bottom here, we have head rotation. Okay, so these are gonna be driven off of the neck joint for Victor here. Um, and I would add that by looking at my scene browser that exists underneath the Victor root, you've got Victor head joint. That's the actual head rotation for Victor. So you can go ahead and add that to your control setup. And then when you're using your expressions, you would simply rotate this joint to the desired amount and uh, save out that value the same way we did before. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is pause the video and I'm gonna load up a finished scene. Uh, you will also have that finished scene in your downloaded folder. So pull that up as well, and then we'll continue from there. Okay, so taking a quick look at our finished example, make sure you're starting your timeline at frame zero, and you can just scrub through and check out all of the posed out expressions here, including the head motion at the end. Um, the important thing to note is if you run into a rig or character that can't do certain poses, for example, maybe you can't open up the eyes wider than, than default, uh, just leave those checkboxes off. Do not leave the checkboxes on with a blank pose because then you're basically telling it uh, whenever the, uh, the data says to open the eyes wide, make the whole face go back to default. Uh, you basically want to make sure those are off uh, if your rig can't do it. And that's not a big problem, it'll just ignore that pose. Okay, so you're going to repeat this process for your character. Uh, again, this is a very simple um, rig to use. You just slide a single slider on and off. Um, so go through the process with this rig just so you can kind of make sure you're uh, have an understanding of what these buttons do and, and how to get through the process. And then go ahead and move on to your character, repeat the same process, and then you'll be able to file save, and that's going to save an XML file. And then I'll show you how we load that onto Face for Live client. Okay, so I've loaded up Face for Live server, and I've got an image sequence of uh, Chris wearing a head cam running through right now. It's all calibrated and it's streaming data. So coming back into Motion Builder, I'm going to load the Face for Live device that we saw in the beginning. 
Under Character Configuration down here, browse and select that XML file that came with your download, or if you've made one yourself, you can select that. Uh, and then click Online. If you see a green light, that means we're connected to live server. And lastly, we want to click Live to go ahead and start the animation. So this animation here is coming from Chris over here. And that's how you do character setup. So go ahead and repeat that process for your character. You should have no problem getting set up. Super easy. If you do have any trouble, you can click user guide here for a written um, tutorial of how to do all this. Might be a little more detailed. Also, you can find our support section is pretty handy for all sorts of other tutorials, uh, as well as reaching us to create a ticket if you need any direct assistance. Uh, you can also email us at support at facewartech.com.